This is a follow-up video to some recent videos we posted about epistaxis. Uh, the examples we gave were on the septum. This is the anterothmoidal artery spot, often referred to as the S-point. You can see a telangiectatic vessel coming here in the beginning of what will become the olfactory cleft, but it is anteriorly here in front of the olfactory cleft. As you can see, it's been described as the S-point by Aldo Stam. It's branches of the anterothmoidal artery. Here's a patient who's been bleeding regularly from their nose, and actually it's not their septum that's bleeding down low and anterior from Little's area, but the anterothmoidal artery vessel area, often referred to as the S-point. This is a very important spot to go looking for when you have a patient with recurrent epistaxis. It's well deep in the nose. Some simple gel here will allow that to heal. Here's another example of someone who'd had recurrent epistaxis, had been packed, had had a sphenopalatine artery ligation, but in fact, when the silicon sheets were removed as the patient rebled again, you head up towards the septum just in that beginning of the olfactory cleft near the middle turbinate root. You can see a clear telangiectatic vessel bleeding from the septum. This is another great example of the S point, that is, a telangiectatic vessel coming from the anterothmoidal artery complex. And if you are looking for evaluation of the nose for bleeding sites, these are the two most common areas, Little's area in the septum and then the S point in the anterothmoidal artery.